Kima is ask certain questions. What does the transformative constitutionalism do? What is it about? Who who are its main purveyors? And what interests does it serve, or who who does it serve? Now, um, so I in the paper I identify the discourse of transformation firstly, because I think it's important that we grapple with this discourse of transformation, because this discourse of transformation has been important in in framing the agenda for political, social, economic, organizational, structural, institutional change in South Africa. It's all it's it's all um, pervasive. So this is this is proposition number one that I set my paper up on. The second one is that whilst transformation has been emblematic of constitutional compromise, this transformative constitutionalism has had the effect of constraining the ambition and possibilities of South Africa's constitutional projects. So it's widely framed as this enabling discourse, but I'm saying, well, actually, if we look at it in another way, it actually does um, entail some constraints. And, and I argue this uh, and, and posit the idea that it's, it's failed to evolve in a way that offers us some deep, meaningful insights or some deep analysis into what is an, an unfolding political, economic, social and cultural quagmire at this point in time. I think the tensions in South Africa at this point in time for anybody who, who's observing what's going on are, are palpable and they are on, on multiple, multiple fronts. So I say this problem with transformative constitutionalism lies in its framing and there are primarily three flaws in the frame of transformative constitutionalism. Very briefly, I, 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 you know, I argue that it's got uh, it, it claims to be political, it claims to be a political project, but it offers us this kind of free-floating, freestanding political vision that self-references the Constitution and, 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 doesn't, uh, and, 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 and conceals the ideological orientation underlying our constitutional project, which I think uh, is problematic for, for the people who are, who are the dominant voices in the discourse. I think this needs to be foregrounded. Secondly, I say it's a court. It's got a court-centric bias. It's got an adjudication bias. My three, uh, my four presenters uh, pre previously have, you know, sorry, my three, three present, three earlier presenters focus on the on on court cases, and I think this is quite characteristic of our own understanding of our of our you know modus of of constitutionalism. And what this does is that it impacts on our understanding of what constitutes constitutional politics and who the main actors and main agents are. There's an, you know, it, it brings about an agency question because that court bias says certain people have voices and others are the voiceless for whom uh, you know, the, the, you know, the legal community must, must, must speak for. Then uh, also arising out of that court bias is a third flaw, but it's an independent flaw. It's that transformative constitutionalism focuses on legal culture. It's, it characterizes legal culture as the primary impediment to the transformational project. And I think this is a massive blind spot. It's not just legal culture that's problematic in a South African context. It's a, it's a hegemonic European, uh, sorry, it's a hegemonic Eurocentric culture that perpetuates context and dominates the many spaces of power in our society. So, so what I then argue is that the discourse's conspicuous absence in contemporary debates about this, this, this quagmire that I, re, uh, I refer to then uh, you know, has implications for how we conceive of, of, of constitutionalism, <clears throat> i.e., what is the conception of constitutionalism that underpins um, transformative constitutionalism. And I think this is key because how we understand transform uh, sorry how we understand the very idea of constitutionalism impacts on what we frame as constitutional questions and, and how we understand the, the the constitutional terrain and what this um, what this has implications for is that it has implications for what we think of when we think about constitutional structures constitutional forms and constitutional means and ultimately who has a say in constitutional meaning making because if we're a, if, if we're a, if, if we're a democracy that sought to to over, sorry if we're a country that sought to overturn a particular type of elite domination albeit a racialized kind of uh, you know group domination then how we understand constitutionalism in an era that we claim to be transformative, or in my mind, in an era that should have been emancipatory or liberatory, then how we understand constitutionalism really, really counts. And we can't, um, 
we can't have uh, we can't really have a, 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 a flaccid or flaccid formalist kind of orthodox understanding because our understanding of constitutionalism has to be informed by where we are, where we're coming from, and and where we want to to go to. So ultimately, ultimately, in asking this question of you know when do you call time on a on a compromise, I'm asking. I'm asking us to think about whether we are at the point where we need to think of moving beyond transformative constitutionalism and, 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 and onto something else, or whether we are fast headed um, towards this point. And really, to understand why or, or how I get here, I think it's important to understand that questions, to understand the questions that. Um, you know that that are behind my entering into into this particular terrain, and really these questions are broadly speaking, as I've mentioned, who who or what is best served by the prevailing commitment to this idea of transformation? Because transformation, I think, is necessarily unstable, contextual, and a highly contestable notion. So it just means that every time we talk about transformative, transformative constitutionalism, there's always this, 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 this open-endedness to what is being discussed, and it depends on, who's, on, it depends on who's speaking. Yet I think our problems are pretty clear, and, our, and, and, and it's difficult to run away from the, particularly the materiality of what, of, what those problems, of what those problems are and what their history is. So... Um, also, so, so, so another important question, you know, underlying this uh, this critique of mine is, what is the value? We have to think about what is the value and what is the cost of centering this project of undoing uh, colonial apartheid's legacies on this, on this, you know, ideas on uh, on, well, on what is essentially, you know, a, pardon me, on uh, on what is essentially a compromise whose validity is being questioned every day from many corners. I think it's difficult to go into, into, into any space where there's serious, um, serious con contestation or serious engagement about where South Africa is without the question of what the, what the meaning of the, comp of the 1990s compromise is, particularly on questions um, of land, questions of, 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 of redistribution, um, redistribution of wealth or the, or the distribution of wealth within society. And then, you know, another one of those, those questions that I think is important to think about is whether transformative constitutionalism serves to constrain um, this constitutional politics um, that, this constitutional politics that is evolving in South Africa by directing energy and resources to <coughs> courts instead of other sites of contestation and resistance. I think this really speaks to the point in, in, in Dende's uh, talk where he's, he, he refers to, to the turn to, to lawfare um, and, and then the concomitant turn from democratic mobilization. I've been told that I've run out of time. Um, but what I want to, to kind of end off with is, that, is, is this point. And it's to say that ultimately, does the very framing of transformative constitutionalism by legal elites not have, to ask this, not have an unwritten civilizing impact that seeks to keep constitutional politics within a familiar liberal Eurocentric normative and constitutional terrain, within the terrain of coloniality, so this, yeah, this is within the terrain of coloniality, whilst failing to meaningfully address urgent questions focused on the you know, unfinished business around the patterns of economic, social, and cultural domination in South Africa, the impetus for decolonization. Okay, and I'll, I'll leave it there and take anything else from questions.